Hello friends, this is Carrie with Cookbook Divas and it's cocktail book week here at Cookbook Divas and I'm looking through three ingredient cocktails. Katie and I shopped for this together, we absolutely had to buy it and after I'm done looking through it with you, I have to turn it over to her. It's by Kate Calder, 60 drinks made in minutes. Now here at Cookbook Divas, we don't look through our cookbooks until we can look through them on camera with you, so I have no idea what's in store for us but I love the end papers, gorgeous. They're making me thirsty. I love the idea of three ingredient cocktails because it's more simple, less fuss, and I probably have the three ingredients in my house. Hardy Grant is the publisher. And let's check out the table of contents. Introduction, cocktails, ways to use this book, etc. Then we have a chapter on vodka, one on tequila, one on gin, one on whiskey, or I would say bourbon, one on rum, and then sparkling. Okay, Let, let's take a quick peek at the introduction. I think we tend to be too nervous around cocktails, writes the author, Kate, in ordering as well as preparing them. We have one or two that we know we like, safe bets, but we're reluctant to branch out and broaden our booze horizons. This book is meant to go some way towards demystifying the cocktail world and inspiring you to get mixing. The reputation of a good cocktail is often cloaked in science and secrecy, so technical and precise that mere mortals, it might seem, shouldn't even bother to try making it. It will take too long to prepare, is too fiddly. What if I get it wrong? I want to prove to you, she writes, that not only does this not have to be the case, but that for most of the world's greatest cocktails, you only need three ingredients and a couple of minutes to whip them up. Many of the classics are surrounded in legends about how they were first discovered or made. These stories are sometimes contradictory and unreliable, mm -hmm, but there's a mythical quality to a timeless cocktail nevertheless. They're classics because they work. All right, cocktails. Since the turn of the 19th century, people have been enjoying glasses of delicious concoctions to set their senses on fire. Each ingredient in a cocktail plays a vital role, starting with a base spirit for flavor, a balancing ingredient for sweetness or acidity, and a seasoning to enhance the mixture and add complexity. Cocktails should be served cold, so make sure you have freezer space and lots of ice. I do not. How to use this book. Ingredients and mixtures, ice, glassware, syrups, snacks, glass glossary, Cocktail kit, shaker, strainer, long stirring spoon, jigger, muddler. And now the first chapter, vodka. I really like the illustrations. The most versatile of spirits, vodka complements an incredible array of flavors from tomato juice to espresso. In the following recipes, I've tried to cover the whole taste spectrum. There's not much you can't do with this beautiful, crystal clear spirit. Vodka's worldwide popularity is due to its ability to vary in character and style. In many countries, it's still enjoyed mostly in the traditional way, neat. The vodka cocktail wasn't actually introduced until 1911 in the U.S. The only rule is that it should be served very cold. The colder it is, the better it tastes. So, our first cocktail of the book, the Hail Mary. It's a savory cocktail often used to secure for hangovers. The Bloody Mary is a very popular brunch cocktail. Being Canadian, her favorite version is called a Caesar, which uses a clam and tomato juice, and I will have a no thank you helping on that one. For this Hail Mary, I've left out the original's call for hot sauce and horseradish and used a spicy tomato juice, a cheat's way of getting all those flavors in at once. No problem. So in this recipe, she shows us the type of glass that we need and then the three ingredients, and then the method, and then how to garnish it. So it could not be easier than this cookbook. Here's a ruby slipper and a viper. This, the ruby slipper is delicately sweet and very refreshing. The viper is snake in the grass is the phrase that comes to mind for this cocktail. <laughs> this one uses lime cordial and dry hard cider. A white Russian, an apple pie, a Moscow mule, so we do not have a, re a photo for every cocktail recipe in this book. An espresso martini. But when we do have photos, they are gorgeous. I don't have to point out to you because you can see them. Lemon drop. Super easy to make. I love making those in summer. A sake teeny. Hmm, I might try that. 
so oh citrus punch punchy sweet cocktails for serving a crowd punch bowls were made for cocktails like this one the ginger beer beer and vodka pairing lifts the fruit juice and makes it invigorating okay vodka snacks most vodka is made in cold slavic nations and for that reason it's often paired with those countries pickled smoked and cured foods but the author argues that because vodka is very versatile you can match other food with it it does work perfectly with savory acidic dishes like pic pickles but it works equally well with decadent rich chocolate desserts so here is dill and sesame pickled cucumbers so this is sort of a cookbook because there's some recipes chocolate and salt cookies cool slow cooked cherry tomatoes bacon and garlic mayo in lettuce cups but no picture now we're going to jump into the gin chapter. Both timeless and ever more fashionable, gin is the cornerstone of many classic cocktails. The term cocktail for most people usually conjures the image of a sophisticated dry gin martini with an olive. It's very much part of pop culture. Yeah. This is called the ice and spicy. What makes it spicy? Cinnamon syrup. Oh, well, I'm allergic to cinnamon, so I won't make that one. Gimlet. The hero's cocktail of choice in endless films noir. It's a drink you've probably heard of, but most likely have never tried. Yeah, I don't think if I have. It's gin, lime juice, and simple sugar syrup. Well, that's pretty easy. Okay. The antioxidant drink. Beautiful. <gasps> the pink lady. Ooh, nice. I actually have some pink gin in the house. Negroni. I'm trying to like Negronis. I just, I'm not there yet. Campari. Mm. Not my favorite, but I'm trying. A summer stroll, a dirty martini. Gin snacks. The recipes are sweet potato bites with chorizo, spring onion and spicy mayo, baked ricotta with honey, lemon, peaches, and basil. Oh, that sounds good. Savory shortbread with rosemary, parmesan, walnuts, and red onion, but no photo. And now we're in the rum chapter. Originating in the West Indies in the 17th century, rum has long been synonymous with the beach. Yes. Here's a Cuba Libre. I do like that drink. A coconut daiquiri or a beachcomber. So not a photo for every recipe. A rum runner in tiki glasses. Cute. What else lies ahead in this cookbook? How about a blue Hawaiian? It's really hard to make blue drinks without blue curacao. So if you don't like the flavor of it, you're, yeah. Rum snacks. Rum cocktails are very popular in warm climates, so it's fitting that the dishes that work best with them are made with ingredients you'd find on warmer shores. Corn and prawn salsa. Here's a recipe for sticky honey garlic sesame drumsticks. Roasted lime and coconut new potatoes seasoned with a hot yogurt dip. And now we're in the tequila chapter. Tequila, the go-go juice of the cocktail world. This Mexican spirit comes from the sap of the blue agave plant and has been around for centuries. It continues to inspire some of the craziest drinking stories. Here's an old smoky. A tequila sunrise, very 80s. El Diablo, and also a drink called a slow mover. Oh, now we're in the recipes for tequila snacks, such as a hot cauliflower wings with blue cheese dip, cornbread topped with pickled red onion, avocado and pomegranate seeds, nice. Loaded beef nachos. Whiskey. Very broadly speaking, there are three types of whiskey and two spellings. Whiskey with an E is from Ireland and the United States, and whiskey without an E is from Scotland, Canada, or Japan. Whiskey cannot be called scotch unless it's produced and bottled in Scotland. The three types are whiskey, rye, and bourbon. Bourbon's my favorite. Old fashioned. This is my go-to drink at a bar. Easy for them to make. Here's something called a drunk uncle. <laughs> Mint julep. Kentucky Derby signature drink. Manhattan, my other go-to drink when I go to a bar. Here's a Ricky. The original Ricky cocktail named after a 19th century American politician who had a penchant for cocktails but didn't like sugar. A whiskey sour. And the recipes are baked salami with marmalade and mustard. Baked camembert with hazelnuts, rosemary, and garlic. And a hot crab dip, no picture. And the final chapter of the book, sparkling. Champagne, Prosecco, and Cava are all drunk neat and unaltered traditionally. Or if you're having Christmas with the in-laws, maybe as a Bucks Fizz. Champagne cocktail. 
April Spritz, a Valentina. April Aperol. I think it's Aperol. Bombshell. A Ritz Fizz, a Cherry Mimosa. That sounds good. No picture, though. And here's either a Turkish Delight. Oh, yes, Turkish Delight. They have a little arrow pointing to it. And the other recipe is a Nutty Bellini. And then Sparkling Snacks. The recipes are Chicory with Smoked Salmon, Dill Creme, Fresh, and Capers. Mini Yorkshire Pud Steak and Horseradish Parmesan Cream with Rocket and Shea Parmesan. That's too much work. You would think a three-ingredient cocktail book would have three-ingredient recipes that are simple. Oh, well. Maple, garlic, chestnut, pate, and roasted pear crostini. This is awesome. I'm so glad I bought it. I don't really want to hand it over to Katie. Thanks for watching this cookbook and cocktail book look through with us here at Cookbook Divas. You can see more of our videos on YouTube. We also post cookbook news and info to our Facebook and Instagram accounts and to our blog at cookbookdivas.com. And we also have a Cookbook Divas podcast if you'd like to hear us chat about new upcoming cookbook releases. Thanks so much for watching.